the 40 hadith of Al-Imam al-Nawawi text with explanatory notes by Umm Muhammad. Hadith number 6. On the authority of Abu Abdullah an numan bin Bashir radiallahu anhu said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, The lawful is clear and the unlawful is clear. And between the two of them are doubtful matters about which many people do not know. So he who avoids doubtful matters has sought to clear himself in regard to his religion and his honor. But he who falls into doubtful matters then falls into the unlawful, like the shepherd who pastures around a private area, all but grazing therein. Undoubtedly, every servant has private property, and indeed the private property of Allah is his prohibited matters. Undoubtedly, within the body is a morsel of flesh which, when it is good, the whole body is good, but when it is corrupt, the whole body is corrupt. Indeed, it is the heart. Narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. The hadith presents certain facts and a directive that is fundamental to the religion. First, the Prophet ﷺ confirmed that what is purely halal, lawful, is recognized, and what is purely haram, unlawful, has been mentioned distinctly by Allah, either in the Quran or through His Messenger ﷺ. As He stated, يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ أَن تَضِلُّوا Allah makes clear to you His law, lest you go astray. Surah An-Nisa, Ayah number 176. These rulings are not subject to doubt and are generally known. But other matters are not widely known by the people or even agreed upon by the scholars, having been subject to differing interpretations and opinions. These doubtful matters, however, are not doubtful in the absolute sense, as shown by the words which many people do not know. Thus, it is understood that there are some scholars who do know the truth about each of these matters and that their reasoning is correct. For those who are uncertain, either due to doubtful evidence or confusion about whether or not a ruling applies to a particular situation, the Prophet ﷺ advised prudence and caution, which is the essence of taqwa, pointing out that it is preferable to avoid those whose permissibility is doubtful. Two reasons are cited by scholars. First, that the matter in doubt could be a means leading to what is clearly haram, so that the person, when indulging himself, gradually lets his guard and drifts into what is beyond doubt. And second, the one who embarks on what is doubtful to him might possibly be doing that which is actually unlawful and has been declared so by those who are knowledgeable about the matter. Footnote. There are some who deliberately avoid religious knowledge, assuming that one cannot be held responsible for what he does not know, while in reality, wherever such knowledge is obtainable, ignorance is neither justified nor excused. End footnote. Thus, whoever avoids a matter about which he has misgivings has sought to clear himself. That is, he has made an effort to earn the approval of Allah, so Allah will be pleased with him in regard to his religion. As for clearing his honor, it means that he will not have given anyone an opportunity to doubt him, think ill of him, or criticize his actions. A person who is careless about falling into doubtful matters has been compared to a shepherd who allows his flock to approach a plot of land whose owner has warned of the consequences of trespassing. How can he possibly prevent his animals from breaking into that plot, especially when they are lured by green grass and lush vegetation? Hence, the scholars have ruled that whatever might lead to haram is also haram such as the improper dress and behavior that could possibly lead to an unlawful sexual relationship or the production, sale, purchase and serving of intoxicants, the consumption of which is haram. The principle of a danger zone is thus established to protect the Muslim against the whisperings of shaitan and of his own soul. Every sovereign may mean a king or an owner. 
it is known that some among the Arabs used to designate for themselves a mark of a portion of land, issuing a public threat to punish or fight anyone who dared cross into it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has issued warnings to those who violate his injunctions and made clear the grievous consequences in the hereafter, if not in this life as well. The Prophet ﷺ was aware that this directive of his would only be observed by those who revere Allah and fear his displeasure. Therefore, he tied it to the mention of the heart. As he said on another occasion, Taqwa is here, pointing to the chest. The hadith shows that behavior is dependent on the state of the heart, which is sometimes compared to a king who commands his subjects, that is, the rest of the body. So, when the heart is sound, the body will do good deeds, avoid prohibited ones, and even avoid those subject to doubt. But when the heart is corrupted and ruled by worldly desires, the body will not resist temptations and will be led into disobedience, easily convinced by numerous excuses, among them ignorance. This ends the explanation to Hadith number 6.